Your friends are scrolling through short content, but you, my friend, you're here to learn. Welcome to Yara's Clips. Do you deal with occult elements in your own practices? In terms of the one thing I've learned about the paranormal, and it comes up a lot on the show, is that when we talk about things like ghosts or beings or aspects of Satan, they feed off of the same energy that you're accumulating for your spiritual practice. आप भूत से मिले हो बींग अ बुद्धिस्ट आई डोंट लाई एंड आई विल नॉट लाई एवर एंड स्पेशली नॉट ऑन योर शो आई विल नॉट से दैट आई हैव सीन अ फिजिकल गोस्ट विद द टंग स्टिकिंग आउट विद द लेग्स बेंट एंड आई डोंट नो फायर कमिंग आउट ऑफ हिस माउथ बट टू बी ऑनेस्ट विथ यू आई वी डू वट वी कॉल एक्सोसिजम्स रिनपोचे इज वन ऑफ द ड्यूटीज ऑफ रिनपोचे is when somebody is possessed uh by some sort of spirit whether it's evil you know malevolent uh just a bad spirit we have to exorcise the person and to protect the person from further harm that i've seen i haven't seen a physical ghost appear out of somewhere yeah so we do uh, do some how you would describe occult stuff and in the himalayas it's a very ancient place lots of wars have taken place it is still not developed like the rest of the nation uh so lots of the places are still virgin in terms of spirituality so lots of spirits reside in the plains in the mountains in the rivers sometimes when you build your house in the wrong location and without doing the proper pujas and bhumi puja and all that without doing the proper cleansing and offering like for example if somebody were to rent your place and if you're willing to sell it or to rent it um they have to give you some money they have to talk to you properly nicely write a contract and everything if you don't do that if somebody comes and just puts his tambu in your house you will not be happy and you will do your best to eject them so it's a bit like that we don't see the spirit world and especially if it's a clean ancient world and then if you all of a sudden start digging up for foundation put up a toilet you know septic tank of pani idhar udhar you know like everywhere um so yeah some of the spirits get angry and they start um you know attacking you in a way and entering the body of people that i've seen many okay um how do you feel when you're dealing with them when you're doing an exorcism compassionate because um they also suffering i don't take offense from such spirits i understand why they are entering the body of another person and what they're trying to uh, express their you know their anger um their uh, revulsion you know their dissatisfaction so i feel compassion and based on compassion i try to remove them peacefully from the person's body you've had a conversation with any of them yeah and the funny thing is when an innocent uh ladaki girl or a guy most of the time is women actually i don't know why um when she is possessed and she is pure ladaki and ladaki language is a little bit different from tibetan though we have similarities is based on the same script um like maybe hindi nepali a little bit i think so but she speaks perfect nepali then like perfect tibetan and then she says i'm from this place i'm from that place and you have never heard of such place until you verify and you re- realize that there was such a place as somebody had fallen down a gorge and drowned or killed or whatever and just very unhappy and just wandering around looking for liberation and found this innocent girl so yeah so then when somebody speaks a different tone a woman has the uh, voice of a man and starts speaking a different language you start to take notice whether you're superstitious or not i'm not a superstitious person I am a modern person, uh, slightly educated, been around the world. I don't believe in like things easily until I see them. So I've seen them and I've talked to them and I've interacted with them. Yes. Okay. Do they acknowledge your spiritual prowess? Yeah, they usually kind of uh, freak out a little bit. <laughs> they look at me and they're like, um, you know, go away and I'm sorry, but you know, and I'm scared of you. Please don't harm me, uh, because we say that Rinpoche is we. have been practicing the buddhist path for so many generations like i've been doing it for eight rebirths so maybe like 500 years roughly uh, more or less so then we also do a lot of what we call protection deities 
We have a lot of protection deities. They're very powerful and they accompany us. So some people who are, who can see, who are possessed, but with not with the bad spirits, with some relatively good spirit, they look at me and they're like, on your right shoulder, there is uh, Chakmen, which is a male deity, very powerful. On your left shoulder, there is Paldin Lhamo, which is like Kali Mata. And then you have a third eye on your forehead. So yeah, they say certain things like that. So we are accompanied by deities. So wherever Rinpoches go, his deities will accompany him to protect him so that his activities will not be, uh, you know, there will not be obstacles. So when some of these people, uh, bad spirit, they see me, they sometimes freak out a little bit and they say like, oh, I'm so sorry, you know, for doing this. Please don't harm me and all that. But I assure them, I'm only here to help you. Please stop torturing this person. And I say certain mantras, you know, mostly I try to do it compassionately. Yeah. Mostly. Mostly, yes. Some of them are quite naughty and Laton ki bhi hote I can't imagine you angry or fierce. Just when I talk to you, I feel like I'm talking to someone younger than me. You know, like you give out that kind of uh, Sun Goku energy. That's what I'll say. But when and how, what do you do when you have to become fierce with the spirits? Um, honestly, I never beat them. I never physically harm them. Maybe I'll squeeze their hands a little bit. I will grab their head and I will just squeeze their skull just a little bit to grab their attention. I'll make them look into my eyes and I will try to enlarge my eyes, though I have very small eyes, and I'll tell them now I'm not, you know, bullying. <laughs> I'm being serious and you really have to let go of this person. You really don't want me to, you know, you don't want to see the bad side of me. And I do have a, no, I can say, I do have a fierce side. <laughs> He's been suppressed for a long time. <laughs> You've had to take it out of out and out for yourself? No, no. I haven't taken it out for many years and I really don't like to take it out. <laughs> Are you comfortable talking about when you took it out? Um, Yeah. I mean, it's like, uh, I don't know. It's like, I really get out of control actually. And something happens to me. There's this fire burning in my body. Everything becomes very reddish dark reddish black and white and i just uh, focus on that person or the thing that is enraging me so much and i just zero into that and i don't say anything else so i used to feel that more when i was younger but now i think with practice with meditation that has become more under control yeah you mm -hmm. carried these deities and abilities with you when you went to europe uh, well, I honestly speaking, I really don't know I carry them or not. That's what, you know, the spirits tell me. But uh, supposedly, it goes with me wherever I go. And maybe sometimes when people say like, oh, Rinpoche, I feel this aura with you. You're a little bit this and that. Maybe they feel certain aspects of these deities. You know, they're projecting something on my behalf or I don't know. But I've had near-death experiences. Like I've almost drowned once. When I drove my Maserati at 300 kilometers per hour on the Autobahn, almost crashed. Um, I was very foolishly Peugeot 106, I think, in England. I was very poor. I had a Peugeot 106, lovely little car. I was going to work and I wanted to change my sweater. So while driving, took off my seat belt, okay? And I was taking off my sweater, it got stuck. <laughs> I couldn't pull it down. I pulled it down and I was almost entering the the lane that was coming this side. So almost died there, like maybe a split second. I managed to put it back. So few near-death experiences. And also when I had COVID, almost died two years ago, very badly hit by COVID. I had pneumonia before I had COVID. So my defense went down, my immune system, my system went down. And I think it was the first one. I don't know which one it was, but it was very fierce. There was no, uh, you know, vaccination, nothing at all. And uh, almost died then. But I think that was a time when I felt I was okay to die. I'm ready to die. Like, if I have to die, I'm okay. Yeah. But you were supposed to do all this more work in the world. I guess I had to be on the Ranveer show. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Damn those Chinese people. They're like, no, 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 I'm kidding. <laughs> so if you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out this playlist for more videos just like this. It's the artist clips.